video, just a recent discovery I've made about a way of looking at your calorie intake. Now this mainly goes by you know maintaining your weight, cutting or going on a on a bulk cycle or some kind of you know where you go in a surplus or a deficit. Now in this video I want you to understand is that this doesn't change the fact that you need to deficit or you need to surplus or or a different way of maintaining your um, your body weight. It's just that it's a different way of looking at it and a different way to kind of um, do it. And you know it kind of makes your plan a bit more flexible and then there's not some gimmick or whatever. But it's it's really a scientific approach of looking at it. So if you're looking at here, I have my week set out and my micronutrient intake for each day and the calorie intake for each day. Now, instead of just, you know, when you're going into a cut, instead of just having a deficit every day, what you're essentially doing when you're deficiting every day is that you're having a weekly total deficit, right? So we know that, you know, in order to lose fat, yes, we can notice a, you know, a slight change on a daily basis, but your really big changes happen weekly and monthly, right? It's more prominent with muscle mass. Now, coming to this, what I did was that I set up my calorie intake for each day, and you notice it's different from each day. A, mon a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm at 2,600. But on Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday, I'm at 2,000 calories. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, that's when I'm doing my, my main workouts, you know, my main high volume workouts. Wednesday, I have a slightly low volume, and the weekend, I was on my rest days. Now, the point of doing this is that when you have a high volume workout or even when you're working out, that'll stimulate your appetite, meaning that you'll feel more hungry during those days. And during those days when you just have a strict flat line calorie intake of say 2,000 calories or 2,500 per day, right, maybe on the lifting days you're going to feel a bit more hungry and you may actually, you know, tend to snack on something. That will increase your calorie intake. Now, that doesn't matter unless you ingest um, adjust, adjust the, the next day. So say maybe um, today I have 3,000 calories and maybe the next day I deficit by 400 to maintain the, you know, the 2,600. Right. So what you should do is you should calculate the number of calories to take in on a weekly basis. So here, right, when you add up all these numbers of calories, at the end of the week I have 16,400 calories. This is on the surplus for me on calories because you know, I want to put on a bit more muscle. But if you want to cut, you know, say your um, your maintenance uh, calorie intake or your BMR or your basal metabolic rate, something like 2,000, then your weekly intake should be 14,000. That will be to maintain your weight. If you want to deficit, you know, maybe you want to go down to 13,000, 12,000, 11,000, 10,000, whatever, you know, the deficit needs to be in order for you to achieve your goal. Now, the whole point of this and why I recommend you actually plan out your calories in your days or maybe look at it as a holistic view on a weekly basis is that say maybe you go out you know with your friends or your family and maybe you have a big supper or something or you go out or maybe feel like fast food or you go maybe and, and drink a bit you can say that'll be like your slightly high calorie day and you see right how, how that looks on your weekly basis maybe for the rest of the week you're going to deficit on the other maybe six days or maybe the next day you're gonna deficit for that day in order to maintain your weekly caloric needs. Now this this is just puts a simpler way to view it. This makes it more flexible for you to um, to have you know maybe cheap meals. Not really cheap days because if you have a cheap day you're not likely you're not likely going to deficit on the rest of the days because if you do an entire cheat day and accumulate a massive amount of caloric intake on the rest of the days you're gonna to have to deficit at something like a five hundred or a thousand to maintain that weekly need. So this is a better way to incorporate a cheat meal because when you incorporate that cheat meal, you don't really feel the negative effects of it because maybe that that cheat meal is extra four hundred calories. You can maybe take out, you know, um, maybe, you know, 50-50, I'm not doing the exact maths, you have 50-50 of each of the days, and at the end of the day, you know, you take out all that, you know, extra calories, maybe, you know, maybe it's that cup of tea every day you take out, and you and you get, you know, a nice 
I don't know, maybe had ice cream on that day. This is just another way to be a bit more flexible. I also recommend it because when you plan when you plan something out um, the week ahead or the day ahead or something like that, you tend to stick to the plan and adhere to it more as opposed to you know just going by the wing and just recording everything afterwards. Because if you set out and you plan things ahead of time, you're more likely to stick with that. So I hope you guys learned something useful and you know a different way to kind of um, look at your caloric intake and dieting and maybe make it a little bit more easier for you. I'm doing this myself and it seems to be a bit more effective and you know it helps me maintain my appetite and hunger on different days because on days you know I'm just chilling at home I don't feel as hungry so I have less calories on the day I'm training I'll go higher calories because the, the higher volume of the workout in nature will increase my appetite. So catch you guys next time with another video.